Happy Sabbath. Thank you, ladies, for such a beautiful special. We appreciate both of you. How's everyone doing? Is anyone feeling good? Feeling blessed? Grateful? It is such a blessing to be here this morning in the house of the Lord, in this house of worship. It is so good to see all of your beautiful faces and smiles. Pastor Daniel and I were doing the math on Tuesday morning, and it's about to be five months ever since I came to Augusta. And let me tell you that although I love Augusta, I love the city, I love Georgia, nothing beats right here, right now. It is always such a blessing to be in the house of the Lord with you guys, with my church family. And I just want to say today that I thank you, that I'm thankful for you, for your love and warmth ever since I came here. It seems like the church family is completed today as we have some of our college students home for Thanksgiving break. We love you, we keep you in our prayers, and we're so glad that you're home. With this being said, I invite you to go in prayer with me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you, we love you for the opportunity, this beautiful opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for allowing us to be here And as we open your word, we ask that you open up our hearts and minds so we can listen to your voice. Please, speak directly to our hearts. We ask these things in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. Berta Elizabeth Murin. She was born in 1911. She was a healthy young lady until she turned 10. As she became a teenager, she became paralyzed from her waist to her feet. How sad, right? Just five years after, she lost her sight, but that didn't stop her from learning, from relearning how to write and read. She was able to learn how to read and write through the Braille system. Just two years after that, when she was only 17, she lost the ability to hear. She became deaf, but that didn't stop her from communicating with people. Through her love of her mother, through the patience of her mother, she was taught how to communicate with people as those that were speaking to her would come and she would place her hands on the lips and throat of those that were communicating with her. Just a few years after that, her body, her condition had gotten so bad that she could only move her neck and the muscles of her throat. But that didn't stop her from communicating with people. Through the patience and love of her mother, she learned how to communicate with people as people would come and they would place their lips on her forehead. And she would understand by the grace of God what they were telling her. Everyone that got to know her would say that she never complained. She always kept a smile in her beautiful face as long as she could. But the years passed by and her body got so rigid that she could barely move her tongue and her jaw. But that didn't stop her from dictating beautiful poems to her mother that will tell everyone that will read these poems that this world was a beautiful place that God had created for us to live. Everyone that got to know her, that would ask her how she was able to accomplish all these things, regardless of her condition, her paralysis. She would say that it was only through the faith and the grace of God in her life. She lived according to the Bible verse that we find in Ephesians 5.20 that reads, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ. One of my professors in the university will always tell me that life is a miracle that we can only see when we put on the glasses of gratitude. Life is a miracle that we can only see when we put on the the glasses of gratitude. When we read the epistles that were written by the Apostle Paul, we see how he always encouraged everyone to give thanks to God in all circumstances. Regardless of what was going on in their lives, Paul always encouraged everyone to give thanks to God, to praise Him, to rejoice always, to continue praying for one another in every circumstance. Perhaps the most demanding one is found in 1 Thessalonians, and I invite you to go with me to 1 Thessalonians Chapter 5, verse 18. And there we will see how Paul encouraged everyone to give thanks to God, to praise Him at all times. 1 Thessalonians 5, 18 reads, Give thanks in all circumstances, 
For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Today, as we open the Word of God, as we discover through this Bible verse, as we see how Paul encourages everyone to rejoice always, to pray for one another, to give thanks in all circumstances, we're going to discover and study together three big things. The first one, the big challenge. Would you agree with me if I tell you that giving thanks to God in every single circumstance, in every single circumstance, is a challenge? Would you agree with me? Or is that something that is easy for you to do? In reality, giving thanks to God in all circumstances becomes a challenge, a big challenge for all of us at some point in our lives. I constantly run into people that tell me, Pastor, it would be so much easier to give thanks to God in all circumstances if I had the financial stability that the people next to me have. Pastor, it would be so much easier to give thanks to God in all circumstances if I wasn't struggling in school, if I would be getting the grades that I'm aiming for. It would be so much easier to give thanks to God in every circumstance if I was being as blessed as my family in church. Pastor, it would be so much easier to give thanks to God if my mom wasn't struggling, battling with cancer at home. Pastor, it would be so much easy if everything was going well for me. And that is right. But oftentimes when we're being blessed by God, when we're being prospered by God, the enemy is when he attacks the most. Just think real quick about this, the life of Joseph. He makes it to Egypt. He was sold as a slave by his brothers. And when God was blessing everything that he did, when he was being prospered by God, the enemy will come after him every single time. And that oftentimes happens in our lives. And the enemy attacks us and brings difficult circumstances into our lives. Someone this morning could say, Pastor, bear with me. Put yourself in my shoes. How can I give thanks to God when my kids have gone straight? Pastor, how can I give thanks to God when I'm struggling with depression and anxiety? When I spend so many hours studying and then I don't get the grade that I deserve. Pastor, how can I give thanks to God if I'm battling with this illness? How can I give thanks to God in this financial setback that I'm having? How? How can I give thanks to God? As we open the Word of God, as we read different stories, we see how we're able to give thanks to God in every circumstance. This morning I want to tell you that we're going to be able to give thanks to God in every circumstance as we invite Him into our difficulties. You'll be able to give thanks to God in all circumstances as you invite Him into your difficulties, into your bad times. Most of the time we're praying, God, get me out of this trouble at work. God, get me out of this situation that I'm going through right now. God, get me out of this financial setback that I'm having. And there's nothing wrong with that because we can always count with God's help. Amen? But today I want to tell you that before you get out, you must invite God in. Because sometimes the miracle is not in getting out, but what God is going to do through that situation. Instead of just praying, God, get me out, why don't we start praying, God, come into this hospital room as I take this treatment. Come into the classroom with me as I take this big exam. Come into this trouble at work where the people are not fair. Come into this loss that I'm going through. Come into this depression, anxiety that I'm dealing with. What's more powerful than God bringing you out of a bad circumstance is when God comes in and begins to change things. He comes in and he gives you a strength that you cannot explain. He comes in and he gives you comfort, hope, and peace that surpasses all understandings. He comes in and gives you everything that you may need. If you only focus on God bringing you out of a bad circumstance, you will be disappointed because God doesn't work in our timetable. If you only focus on getting out of a bad situation, you will be disappointed because God doesn't work in our timetable. Remember, sometimes the miracle is not in getting out, but what God will do through our situations. My dad always tells me the story of his two best friends when he was little. They were brothers. My dad says that those two best friends that he had, those two brothers, they grew up in church. The mother taught them about Jesus' love, his plan of salvation, 
They were part of the Adventurers Club, Pathfinder Club. They would go to Camp Paris together. They grew up in church, praising God every Sabbath, Wednesday night for prayer meeting, Vespers for youth on Friday night. But then, as they transitioned to college, they put God to the side. They completely forgot about everything that the mother and the family at church had taught them. Completely ignored God for so many years. And it didn't matter how many times the mother would come and beg them to come back to church. Beg them to, to, to think about what they were doing with their lives. As they became adults and made their families, the mom continued praying even harder. She would bring the different pastors to their houses, but it didn't matter. They wouldn't come back to church. Unfortunately, after so many years, the mother was diagnosed with cancer. And after a short period of time, the mother passed away. At the funeral, those two brothers were hopeless. They were devastated. They couldn't stop crying. They continued crying on each other's shoulders because they knew that they had not responded to the invitation that their mother had made them for so many years. As the pastor was speaking in the funeral, as he made an appeal, the Holy Spirit touched their hearts. And their hearts were softened at that time. They looked to each other and they decided to invite God into their difficulties, into that situation, that moment that they were going through. At that time, they decided that they didn't want to say goodbye. They wanted to say, sleep in peace. We'll see you when Jesus comes back for us. At that time, later that day, I could see the family members praising God, not because of the loss that they were going through, because of the miracle that God had performed through that situation. Do you see the miracles that God performs when we invite him? into our difficulties? Will you invite God today into your difficulties? As you do this, you will see how he comes in and he begins to change things. As you invite God into your difficulties, you will see how you have rest, how you have peace, because God will come in. You will know that he's in control. You will know that he's guiding your steps, and eventually he will put you where you're supposed to be. When you ask God to come in, you're saying, God, Don't just change the circumstances, change me. And it is sad that it oftentimes takes for something bad to happen for us to recommit ourselves to Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to encourage you and invite you to give thanks to God in all circumstances and not just wait to commit your life to Jesus when bad times come around. This morning, I want to remind you that there are two good times to praise God during the good and bad days. Because there is never a bad time to praise God. And that is something that Paul had to learn himself through the experiences that he lived through in his ministry and life. When we go to the Bible, in Acts chapter 16, we see how Paul and Silas were going into Philippi. They were doing God's work. They were fulfilling the Great Commission. They were doing His work. They were healing people, bringing hope through the good news of salvation. Removing demons out of people. But the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 16, and I invite you to go with me to Acts chapter 16, we see how the city became agitated. They were attacked and thrown into prison. But this morning, we're not here to listen to my Cuban accent. We're here to read God's word. So go with me to Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 24. Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 24. And he reads, the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. But these missionaries, Paul and Silas, did not get discouraged because they knew that God was in control. They did not wait until the bad time came around for them to invite God into their lives. Therefore, they knew that God was in control, that, that He still had a purpose for them. And they knew, that if they, they knew that if they would give thanks to God in that circumstance, God would show up and perform a miracle. When we go back to the story, verses 25 through, through 34, we see the miracle that God performed that night. It would have been so easy for them to question God, as we oftentimes do when we face a difficult time in our lives. But that's not what they did. They decided to give God worship and praise Him at midnight. 
Let us read together. Verse 25. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and, as, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and his households were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole household. Amen? Do we see the miracles that God performs when we invite him into our difficulties by giving him thanks and praises at all times? Paul and Silas could have easily questioned God and get upset at God because they were doing his work. And what were they getting in return? Being thrown into prison? Getting beat up? But they knew that God was in control as they invited God into that difficulty that they were going through. They knew that God had a purpose, and God indeed performed a miracle that night. Do we see the miracles that God performs when we invite him into our lives? Not only the prisoners were able to listen to the good news of salvation that night, to the praises that they were singing, but a whole family was saved for God's kingdom. Amen? Romans 8.28 gives us a beautiful promise that God always keeps. Romans 8.28 tells us, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I ask you this morning, would you decide today to invite God into your difficulties? Would you praise him? Would you give him thanks in all circumstances? As that is God's will for our lives in Jesus Christ. This is a decision that we must make this morning as a family, a personal decision that we must make to give God thanks in all circumstances, for that is His will for our life in Jesus Christ. As First Thessalonians 5 tells us, this morning I tell you that it should be our desire to praise God, to give Him thanks for His will to be done in our lives, and we will see His hand working through every situation. At this moment you may think, about many Bible characters that made the decision to give thanks to God in every circumstance. And this morning I want to talk to you about Daniel. When we go to the book of Daniel chapter 6, we see how a decree was signed that anyone who prayed to God would be thrown into the lion's den. And what did Daniel do? What decision did he make? Let us go together to the Bible and see what he did. Daniel chapter 6, verse 10, reveals to us that for Daniel, it was his desire for God's will to be done in his life. Daniel 6, chapter 10, it reads, Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Daniel at that time had the freedom to make a decision that would save his life for sure. He knew that a decree had been signed, but that didn't stop him from being a faithful follower of Jesus Christ, from desiring for God's will to be done in his life. That day, as Daniel prayed to God, as he was his custom, he did as the psalmist said in Psalms chapter 40, verse 8, I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. That day, the beautiful promise that we find in Deuteronomy 31a became a reality in Daniel's life. He reads, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. As we go back to Daniel chapter 6, we see how God always fulfills his promises. 
Let us read together verses 19 through 22. Daniel 6, verse 19 through 22. At the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angels, and he shut the mouth of the lion. They have not hurt me, because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. Some God, sometimes God is not bringing you out just yet because he wants the odds to be against you in a bigger way. So when he actually brings you out, it will be a greater miracle. When we, greet, when we go to verse 25, we see the miracle that God performed that day. It says in verse 25 through 28, then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in all the earth, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of the kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the powers of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus and the Persian. Here we see, through the faithful decision that Daniel made in his difficulties, that God showed up because God always fulfills his promises. I tell you once again, sometimes the miracle is not in getting you out, but what God will do through that situation. God will not keep us out of every fire, but he will make sure to be in the fire with us. When we think about Daniel's friends, the three Hebrew teenagers, the king said, you will bow down to my image, to my statue, and they refused. So he got furious and said, warm up the furnace seven times hotter, to the point that the people who did his command were burned immediately. As the king threw them into the fire, the furnace, he saw, he saw four people and he said, did we not throw in them just three? And one of them looks like the son of man. When they, were, when they came out, they did not even smell like burn. Because God was in the furnace with them. God will not keep us out of every fire, but he will make sure to be in the fire with us. Sometimes the miracle is not in getting out, but what God will do through the situation. Without a great test, you won't have a great testimony. And God wants all of us to have a great testimony, a strong faith, so we can share with others the goodness of God in our lives. Without big battles, we won't see big victories. And oftentimes, when God fights the battles for us, we forget to give Him the glory He deserves, the glory that He only deserves. Because as we know, He always fights our battles as long as we invite Him in, and then He gives us the victory. As God comes through for you all over again in your life, as you see his hand working miracles for you, don't ever forget to give him the praise that he alone deserves. This is where King Nebuchadnezzar got, of course. When we go to Daniel chapter 4, verses 2 to 3, we see where King Nebuchadnezzar got, of course. So go with me to Daniel chapter 4, verses 2 to 3. King Nebuchadnezzar said, It is my pleasure to tell you about the signs and wonders that the Most High God has performed for me. How great are his signs, how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an eternal kingdom. His dominion endures for generation to generation. He was praising God, giving him thanks for the signs and wonders. So God continued to increase him as he recognized that it was only through the power of God that he was being successful. But one day, when you go to verse 29, as King Nebuchadnezzar was looking over the city, he got off course, and he forgot to give God the glory that he only deserves. In verse 29, he was looking over the city and said, 
Is not this the great Babylon I have built as the royal residence by my mighty power and for the glory of my majesty? Listen to all the minds that he said. He said, my, my, my power, my glory, my majesty. His attitude, he said, I'm something great. And he forgot to give God the glory, the glory that he only deserves. And the problem is that we were not created to contain glory. We were created to give God glory. And that is something that King Nebuchadnezzar forgot. And let me tell you that again, because it seems like you didn't hear it. We were not created to contain glory. We were created to give God glory. Amen? Would you make the decision today to give God the glory that he deserves? To give him thanks, as Paul invites us to do in every circumstance? Is that a decision that you will make today? Verse 31 says, Even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. This is what is decreed for you. King Nebuchadnezzar, your royal authority has been taken from you. I ask you this morning, would you take on this big challenge to give thanks in all circumstances? Would you make the decision to praise God regardless of what you're going through? Today, we have discovered the big challenge that we have through the life of Paul, that he praised God after, beating, after being beat up, after being thrown to prison, and God showed up and did a miracle. A whole family was saved for God's kingdom. Then we discovered the big decision that Daniel and his friends made, and God performed a miracle for them as well, to the point that the king wrote a decree to all the nations that they would praise the God of Daniel. But Paul, in his letter to Thessalonians, he does not only tell us to give thanks to God in all circumstances. He does not only tell us to rejoice always, to pray for one another. He also points us to the big direction that we're heading. As we humble ourselves, as we invite God into our lives, as we go closer to Him, as we go through different circumstances in our lives. Paul, in his letter, not only tells us to give thanks in all circumstances, he also points us in verses 23 and 24, the direction where we're heading. Go with me back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. And he reads, May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Amen? The direction we take for our lives is marked by our priorities. And I tell you this morning, prioritizing gratitude will make us fit to meet Jesus and receive the crown of eternal life from his hands. Paul, in this letter, that not only tells us to rejoice always, to continue praying for one another, to give thanks in all circumstances, for that is God's will for our life through Jesus Christ. But he also tells us the direction where we're heading as we fulfill, as we take on this big challenge, as we make the decision to praise God through it all. Hebrews 12, verse 28 tells us, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Last Sabbath, we wrapped up the, prophet, the prophecies seminars that we were having here at church. As we discovered through six weeks the beautiful prophecies that God has for us to bring us hope so we cannot be left in the darkness, so we know what's taking place in our society. We saw how God is soon returning for you and for me, and he desires for you and for me to be ready for that glorious day. And Paul in this letter tells us that as we give thanks to God in all circumstances, as we fulfill his will being done in our life, as we desire for his will to be done in our lives, as we praise him through it all, we'll be able to receive the crown of eternal life on the hands of Jesus. God desires for us to be ready for his soon return, but he also wants us to put in practice what we have learned today, to put in practice gratitude, to always show that we're grateful to God for his goodness, for his mercy, for his grace. So this morning, if you want to make the decision, if you want to take on the challenge of giving thanks to God in all difficulties, as you praise him, as you invite him into your difficulties, I invite you to stand up so we can do a gratitude activity at this moment.
So I'll read a few statements, and after every one of them, we'll say together, thank you, okay? Dear God, for the gift of salvation, we say, thank you. For your unconditional love, we say, thank you. For your grace and mercy in forgiving our sins, we say, thank you. For the word of God, we say, thank you. For the freedom we have, we say, thank you. For turning our tears into happiness, we say, thank you. For performing miracles in our lives, we say, thank you. For our family, children, spouses, we say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I ask that you stand remembering that you stay standing so we can sing together hymn 565 for the beauty of the earth. <laughs> 